Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX and this is a continuation of my cardiac lecture number 18. Procedures, specifically the echocardiogram. Okay, let's get into it. I can be found on Instagram, um, Facebook, Pinterest, Google, Etsy, and nursingcamp.com. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing is an echocardiogram, an echo. What is it? Well, it's an ultrasound, and what a patient who would want to get an echo, that's not a seal, it's a person lying on their side, and this is their heart. And what happens is it's a bedside echo, and when it is ordered, it's to assess the structure of the heart, and that's what we're trying to find out. So generally what I always do is, is that whenever I'm in practice, I'll think echo, I'll box it, and then I have a line here, and that line means that I want to know what the ejection fraction is. And that needs to be greater than 60%. If it is less than 60%, um, the patient is more likely to have either right-sided problems or left-sided problems. And that's pretty important. And that ejection fraction I covered in another lecture is what's ejected out of the heart, out of this left ventricle. And that's a big, important finding for um, people who get echoes. So echoes are done for either baseline or when a patient is symptomatic, like shortness of breath, syncope, where they faint, or they just have symptoms of edema or right or left-sided symptoms. And a lot of times with family history, we're going to do an echo. Or if a patient is admitted. So the first step is a bedside echo. The bedside echo is non-invasive, and what you do is, is that you have the patient lie on their side, and um, you put an ultrasound on them, and you basically will look at the structure of the heart. And it's going to look at the right atrium, left atrium. It's going to look at the valves as well to see if there's any regurg or anything like that, or any, um, is the heart really big, as in hypertrophy, big trophy hearts, or is it dilated? and cardiomyopathy, where it's a big floppy heart. And that's what we find out. We get a lot of information from this ultrasound. It's bedside and it is generally chronic because there's no restrictions prior to, to getting it. The other one is that there's also a TEE. Now a TEE does the same exact thing, but it's called a TEE, which is a transesophageal echo. So this is a little bit different because they're going to be a little bit sedated and they're going to stick a tube down their throat. And what they're going to do is then they're going to look at the heart. It really gives a clear picture. But the big issue, the risk of this TE is sedation, aspiration, and so you don't give them anything to eat or drink. So no hamburgers when they come back or you know, and you hold their food is you want to assess whether or not their uh, gag reflex is back. So echo is a pretty important tool in order to identify further assessment findings of the underlying of what's going on with the patient. Um, there's a bedside echo, which is known as invasive, and then the transesophageal is still an echo, but it's more with sedation. Okay, I'm going to show you something that I do to assess procedures, and this is called my A-leaps. And this A-leaps is a way, like with my other things, you've seen my other, other lectures, um, where it's things that I do in order to assess, um, am I covering all the content knowledge that I need to figure out? Um, and this is also helpful for studying. When you're studying and you're looking at, you know, you find a procedure and you like echo, I don't know what that is. Well, you should be able to teach all these core areas. And if you can teach all these core areas, then you have a good understanding and able to apply um, to the questions. All right, so let's get into it. The first thing is A. What does A stand for? It's either acute or chronic. Okay, well, we just talked about that. Um, acute would be more the TEE, and a TEE is acute because of risk of aspiration. The chronic one would be a bedside echo, where there's no real risk other than knowledge. Does the patient know why they're getting it? What is the findings from it? All right, any specific labs before. Well, with a chronic echo, bedside echo, nothing really, nothing specific. 
However, with an acute echo, um, maybe some risk on some sedation, but nothing really stands out as far as really finding out any um, concerns. So what about uh, eating? Does it affect their eating? Um, yeah, well, a TEE will be uh, NPO, right? So they're going to be NPO anywhere from four to six hours or even sometimes 12 hours, depending on policy of the hospital. So always follow policy. But the principle is always NPO before and NPO after. NPO after because of risk of uh, aspiration. Um, however, on a bedside echo, there is no um, uh, pre-procedure problems. Assessment before. Well, on a bedside echo, which is just an ultrasound, it would be knowledge deficit. Um, do they know why they're getting it? Um, however, the assessment during a TEE, um, we're not going to do that. Um, we're going to be more worried about post. We're going to patient who's post TEE. Well, you don't give it, they're still MPO until gag reflexes identified, whether it's positive or not. Um, then, then comes P, pres prescriptions. Do you hold any medications? Or do prescriptions are related to this? Uh, well, there's sedation medications for TEE, but other than that, nothing really. Um, procedures. Um, no procedures are problems. What's the problems associated with this? Well, chronic, I don't, it's mainly, there's nothing really. However, a TEE problem is it somebody feeds that patient and then they uh, aspirate. Um, that's a big problem. All right, so stand out. And then the S is the final spot. And I sit back and I kind of say, okay, an echo. What stands out? If I could give my elevator pitch on like what stands out about an echocardiogram. Well, there's two types. There's non-invasive and then there's invasive. Well, the invasive is a TEE and a bedside echo is non-invasive. So there's a distinct difference between the two, but you get the same data from it. You're always looking for the ejection fraction. However, TEE gives you a clear, um, real clear. So this one tends, to, uh, a bedside tends to be more chronic where a TEE, you really want to know what's going on with the structure of the heart, the valves and all that, and also what's really happening. So patients who are really symptomatic really get a TEE. Another thing that stands out is you don't feed them MPO before and after until a gag reflex. Um, and that's my A leap. So every time I have a procedure, I kind of walk through these things and see if, what stands out. And it helps me clarify um, what I need to know about this content. Okay, that's about it. My name is Nursing Camp, and these are my sticky notes. And this is my cardiac lecture. I can be found on, uh, oops, on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Pinterest, and Etsy, and nursingcamp.com. That's it for me. Nurse on. We'll see you next time.